the sweet, sweet sound in the woman's ear. And so, in faith, let us confess our sins before God and before one another. God of heaven, we confess our need for you. But even as we say that, I wonder if we even know that. We need need food. We need clothing. We need shelter. We need health and health care. We need love. And we can outline in detail how we think we are your son and your defense. And we could add to the list. But in this moment, and with your people, we sit with the deeper questions. How do you need you? How do you get a blood of blood not to be shed on our lives? How do you need a salvation? Lord, you know. Forgive us our hunger for things that are not in you. Fill us with all that we need, including knowledge of your grace. In Jesus' name. Believe the good news. Hear the good news. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Let us join in for the prayer of illumination. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. May the sum of the earth and the heavenly food that it may nourish us today in the way of Jesus and our lives. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The scripture reading, first scripture reading, is taken from Exodus 16, verses 2 to 4 and 9 to 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, 
Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Here ends your meaning. And our second scripture lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. This is right after the feeding of the 5,000. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us try our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the moral of the story is, is serve food and people will come. Over the years, I have worked with different congregations and different denominations, and, and it's so funny because people think they're, like they're the only ones who like food. You're like, oh, we're Baptists. We like food. Or the Methodists will say, oh, you know, there must be food involved if, if it's a Methodist gathering. And I, you know, they're always like, it's kind of universal. Presbyterians, you know, we like food too. My former church used to have these miserable, miserable council meetings, like a session meeting, but we call it a council. And in one of my attempts to make them, to make them more it's palatable, because you know, anyway, uh, was one time I'm like, you know, I'm gonna bring food and see what happens, whether they'll be less grumpy. They, they just didn't want to be there. And the meeting went wonderfully. And at the end, I'm like, okay, we can never meet again if there's not food on the table. And they were like, okay, that's good. And, and they bought in and we rotated who would bring food every month. A more serious story, I was an exchange student when I was in high school. At the age of 16, I went to Chile, or Chile, which is that long, thin, country on the Pacific coast of, of South America. And uh, it was 1984. The, uh, the government was a military dictatorship under General Augusto Pinochet. And it was the first time in my life that I encountered true poverty. And I remember when I would walk, I, I lived for half of my time there in a, in a city called Viña del Mar, 
and you fly into Santiago, which is the capital, make a beeline to the coast, and there's Vina, and a city of about half a million people. And when I would go into the, into the center of town, the metropolis, um, I rem remember going to sit in a, in, in a cafe, you know, outside on, on the street. And you could tell that I was not from there. I'm tall, I'm fair-skinned, I have light eyes, and just by the way people dress, you can tell. Um, and so I would attract a lot of attention and I would also attract attention of a lot of children who would bet. And I remember sitting in this cafe and, and the kids walked in and you know, dirty clothes, dirty feet, these big brown eyes and their hands cupped and they would say, dame, dame una moneda, por favor, dame una moneda, which means give me, please give me a coin. Please give me a coin. And my family said, don't, don't give them anything, otherwise they'll never leave you. They'll never leave you alone. And last week we talked about moments that you remember. This is a moment I remember when you decide not to see what's right in front of you. Not to see people who are obviously there and to ignore the suffering. And I think it wounds the soul a little bit. And it created in me, of course, a longing to live in a world where children would never have to bang on the street. Jesus has just fed 5,000 plus. And the plus is that they didn't count women and children. <laughs> so there's a lot more than 5,000 people there. He had pity on them and he encouraged them, the disciples, to give what they have, you know, give what you have, give it away. But now the people follow after him asking for more, asking to know the trick, you know, teach us, you know, what did you do so that all this bread came so that we might never be hungry? And Jesus sounds unsympathetic in his response, uh, but we know his teachings in the Matthew 25, you know. Feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked. To, you know, Matt, earlier, you know, in Matthew, do not, do not store up yourselves, you know, treasures on earth. We know that Jesus is down with feeding people. He just did it. And the conversation with these folks is really similar to a conversation you had with the woman at the Well of Samaritan woman two chapters before, you know, where she's, they're talking about water. You want water? I will give you living water and you will never be thirsty. And here in chapter six, if you want bread, I will give you the bread of life and you will never be hungry. What does he mean? Oh, he's obviously he's not being literal. Not literal hunger, not literal thirst. The bread to which Jesus was, refers is, is to that which or who gives life to the world. According to scripture, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Now, the word eternal here in Greek, ionios, refers to a qualitative state, not a quantitative state. We're not talking about a length of time or somebody's lifetime. We're talking about a quality of life. Eternal means timeless, out of time. It's not, it's not future focused, it's present focused. It's the quality of life now, in this time. And I remember thinking as a teenager when I, you know, when the church was really working hard to indoctrinate me into the faith. Uh, I, you know, I just remember thinking, if all of this is about some future time, then it's bogus. It has to make a difference here and now. Eternal life starts now. Salvation starts now. Faith in Jesus Christ makes a difference now. And I think we have been living the best sermon example for this in the last year and a half. I mean, last week I talked about the 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 hoarding of food and, and how that affected me or affected us. And obviously I didn't starve. But almost every day I thought to myself, how are people doing this without faith? I got out of bed in the morning because of my faith. I imagine you got out of bed in, in the morning because of your faith. Can I hear an amen? amen. One foot in front of the other. 
meeting the challenges of the day and keeping our hearts open to, to seeing what was going on around us and in the world and responding. Not ignoring, but looking and doing something. You know, one of the reasons uh, that I'm that I'm here was so encouraged to see that your that your church that your leadership made a statement on Black Lives Matter. And I know that that that's controversial for some folks, and and we can talk about that. We have the rest of our lives to talk about that because this is the work of the rest of our lives. Right? Jesus in chapter four spoke about his food. My food is to do the will of the one who sent me. This is our food too. To believe in Jesus is to love the world in word and deed in thought, but also in action. And rather than turn away from the hurting world, we try to be a bomb. I really, I, I would love to get this, that word out of my vocabulary because I always have to explain it because it sounds like bomb. Like, but no, B-A-L-M. Like we, we're to be healing, to be a healing presence, to bring healing to the world. So whether it's Black Lives Matter, I see you, I hear you, I stand with you, your life matters. And my mantra to myself is show up, shut up, and work for change. Or whether it's standing with families, willing to wear the mask until everyone can be vaccinated. It's mesh, feeding the homeless or supporting family promise which is homeless ministry. This work is the, in the world is the food that feeds our souls. And we know it. I'm paraphrasing something that I heard this week, uh, but I was talking about hopelessness. So the folks who, who uh, are despairing are the folks who tend to just sit back and cr criticize. Like somebody should do something. Hopeful folks are do something even a small thing, and it's for, it heals this place. It gives hope to, to our own souls that we can do something to make the world a better place. Part of, you know, part of recovery for alcoholics, the, toward the 12 steps, is to be in service to others, to be part of the healing, we are healed. Make of me an instrument, St. Francis prayed. Uh, did you know that St. Francis came from a lot of money? And he was called into, into war, and he was way more ambitious than he was talented or strong. And he was taken prisoner, and it was in that prison, deprived of everything, that he found the most important thing. Knowledge of God, that God is with us and God is for us, which satisfies the soul. St. Augustine wrote that our souls are restless until they find the rest in me. We are hungry for the living God. We are fed in faith and then called to literally feed, to give ourselves away in love to the world. So I remember last week, the disciples looking at Jesus saying, what do we do? Give what you have. When compassion is offered in bread and cup, as well as word and the word, lives are transformed. Eternal life begins. Um, I, you know, I think now uh, you know, what I would have done differently when I was 16 on the streets of Vina and Maj, surrounded by, by um, poor children begging. And I don't know, uh, the, the currency there are pesos, you know, everything. So like uh, 100 pesos, 100 pesos is like one dollar. And if I had had, you know, if I had changed money and just gave away a coin, and I would like to think that I would have asked them their names, and I would have asked them their help in helping me learn Spanish. Uh, what do you call this? What do you call this? What do you call this? To see them and interact with them, um, and and I know that there, you know, I know that there's some skepticism in that, but I also know, you know, I, there wasn't, I didn't have a bottomless pit of money. I came with a certain amount of money, but I also know that I spent a lot of money on beer and cigarettes that year. Cien pesos, but not a lot. As an adult, I mean, th these are formative experiences. So when, uh, so as an adult, I work to live in a world where little children might not have to beg on the streets. It's what we do with our money. It's it's what we encourage our 
representatives to do in, in government, what to support and what not to support. Uh, it means working for a just world, fighting for equity. As God's children, we aspire to love God, neighbor, self. Believing in Jesus means making that our life's work, our life's work. And as we are fed, fed from above, we are feeding those around us. Souls are fed, bellies are filled. And it's a win-win for us and for the world. Uh, Jesus did not turn the people away empty. He gave them everything that they needed. At this table, we are reminded that we have everything that we need to live in faith. Jesus shows up for us. Jesus is with us and in us, making it so we can give flesh to the love of God to a world that is hungry to know love and justice and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. You are invited to stand in spirit or in physically stand up. And we are going to sing together, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. shake with some fresh fruit, but I could have had granola. I could have had eggs and bacon or toast, or I could have gotten in my car and gone and gotten a breakfast burrito. <laughs> but this morning, I'm not hungry. My body is satisfied, and I'm glad. I'm glad also that I know the bread of heaven, 
So my soul is also satisfied. And so what we have a chance to do now is since we know the bread of heaven, and since I think most of us who are sitting in the pews today probably did have a decent breakfast, we have a chance to, to become, as Robin said, love and flesh, a God who gave us hands to give so that the needs of the world can be met, both that people be physically fed and also be spiritually fed. So now is our time when um, you can give through tithely. I think everybody knows this, but they are saying we have deacons in the back. When you leave, you can deposit something in the basket or you can mail in a check. But, but prayerfully consider in this time of reflection and beautiful music, what you can give, what, what you've been given more than you need of so that you can share it with the people of the world. can make bread 
and meat fall from heaven. Help us play our part in, in helping bring these showers of goodness to all people to help meet your desire that all would eat their fill, not only of the physical food, but of Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven, in whose name we pray. Amen. And I'm going to invite you to stay standing just for a second. Um, as we come to this table, we, uh, we recognize that this is also an eternal space, uh, that it is timeless and out of time. And when we celebrate, we believe that we are celebrating communion with the saints who have gone on before us, those who will come after us. And so we want to recognize this morning that one of the, the saints of, of this congregation uh, that we will pray for in, in the prayers, but Betty Poppingham Nelson passed away and we stand to honor her. And now you may be seated. This table is not my table and it's not your table. It is the table of Jesus Christ. He invites all who come seeking him to participate. I would in, invite you, encourage you, that when you come to come in faith, he will meet you here. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who calls us together who makes family of strangers. Lord, you call us to be the best version of ourselves, to embrace the realities of this world with eyes open and with hearts overflowing with love. Lord, we need you. We need your help to keep our eyes open because we get overwhelmed. And it's so easy to shut our eyes, never turn on the television, shut our doors, and just focus on, on our little pieces of the world. You call us to embrace the world with your love. Lord, we will follow as long as you promise to leave as long as you promise to give us what we need for the living of these days. And indeed you have. And you have given us this meal to remind us that you are, that you are with, and that you are with us. You have given us the gift of something that we can taste and touch and smell and see to remind us that you are indeed very real. Lord, I pray that your spirit might fill the bread and fill the cup. Here and for folks at home. Fill them and fill us, we pray. Encourage us for the living of these days. That you might find us faithful. Lord, we in scripture read the stories of the hosts who have gone before us. And they're so very human and we're so grateful for that. They have moments of glory and then they have moments of shame and to, that have been preserved forever. But we're grateful that to know that we have our moments of glory and we have our moments of shame and that's just being people of faith. Lord, keep us keeping on. We thank you for the witness of scripture. We thank you for the witness of the people that surround us, for the folks who have gone before us and the folks who will come after us who will point to you with their lives. Lord, we pray that you would cover everything that we say and do with your grace. For without you, we are absolutely nothing. Thank you, Lord, for being present with us in this time, in this space, in this meal, and when we leave this place. Lord, we're grateful for that we also 
It's not just the Lord's Supper, it's communion that you bind us together. And Lord, we are grateful that, that uh, we are willing to lift up and be honest with one another, the concerns and the joys of our hearts. So we continue in prayer for, for this community of faith. Yes, Lord, help us to remember all these things and to remember you. And today, we ask that you'd also help us to join the community, remember these people who cry out not to be forgotten by us or by you. All these people we bring in on our hearts today. And so, Lord, we, we come alongside wherever they are, whether they're in the community of saints, whether they're in their home right now, whether they're physically here. So that they're not alone. So that we remember them to you and we name their names. We ask for you to be gracious and present as the bread of life for Dorothy and Ken and Larry, Mercedes and Gail, for Stephanie, for Pedro and his family, and for Yvonne's mom. For Sydney, help her to find her way. For Susan, Susan's friend, Bill. For Andrea, heal her, Lord. For Bonnie's family, and for the people who mourn her loss. For Betty's family, Betty Kaufman, probably did not see her family, and those of us who knew her well, be with us as we mourn her loss and as we celebrate her life. In the same way, help help, help um, the family of Joan save them, particularly as they plan a gathering to remember her and to remember you. We pray for Christine and Elizabeth. And there are so many people that we bring in in our hearts and we don't even have time to stop and even find them, even though we're carrying them around all the time. So in this space, Lord, let us name them to you in our own hearts. particularly ask for you to help our world find a way out of the wilderness of COVID. Help us as your people, all the people around the world who know you, who feast on you, who remember you, who are strengthened and guided by you. Help us to be a blessing wherever we are. Help us to encourage the faint-hearted, to strengthen the, the weak need, and to feed, and to point to you. Help the people, help your people all over the world, and help us in this neighborhood do the same thing. And so as we come to share your table and be fed by you, we ask for you to bless us and keep us. And as we remember the crowds of people who said, give us this bread always. We ask that we would have a sense today that we are feasting on that same bread that you fed them, your very self, and that it would satisfy our restless hearts that cannot rest until they rest in you, our living bread, our bread of heaven. And since you have called us to be your disciples in this time and place, we ask that you would hear us pray the words that Jesus taught them to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us to evil, for thine is the kingdom. And the Lord
The Apostle Paul tells us that on the night that our Savior is betrayed, he took bread, and after he blessed it, he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant filled with my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink you all of it. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God, and let all of God's people say, Amen. So, this is our first time getting to celebrate communion together in a very, very long time. Uh, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to invite you to file forward uh, through the center aisle. Uh, Margo and I will uh, put a piece of bread um, into your outstretched hands and with a tongue so we will not touch it. You are invited to uh, eat immediately. Then uh, elders will be at the side holding the cup. You will take a cup, drink immediately, keep moving out towards the edge, and there will be another elder with a bowl where you put your used cup, you put your mask on, and then you go back and sit in your seats. If coming forward is a challenge, uh, we will bring communion to you. Uh, and for folks at home, um, you are going to get to listen to some beautiful music while while and and watch the family of faith go file forward, friends, with with joy and thanksgiving that that this is possible. Um, let us celebrate the gifts of God at this table. Amen. Let us join hearts in prayer. Gracious God, we're so grateful. Grateful that you are. Grateful that you are with us. Grateful that when we leave this place, we know that your love and your call and your blessing go with us. Lord, it is our greatest honor. Spirit, we are able to bless the world. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen.
I'm grateful to God for many things this morning, uh, and one of them is your playing. Praise be to God. Um, children of God uh, who try to keep it together and do so much of the time. Know that we worship an incredibly gracious and loving God who wants to be present with you each and every moment of each and every day with each and every breath. Go into this world knowing that the God who knit you together in your mother's womb would die for you and did in the person of Jesus Christ and is with you in power and spirit this day and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.